The coding durability test puts excess through a cycle of 10,000 strums. Through the lens of a microscope, it is clear that excess retains its composition better than other coded strings. Testing complete. with Premier Guitar. We are in California at Tim Pierce's place. Tim Pierce, whom every one of you has heard him. He's been over on over a thousand albums. And I've, I've been following your, uh, your YouTube channel for years. Thank you for all the stuff you've shown me. Uh, <laughs> <And> likewise. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, his master class, which you all should check out. Thank and you. right now, Tim's going to kind of take us through some of his rig. Well, this guitar I got down the street at Norm's. It's dangerous living up here, uh, up the hill from Norm's, because <laughs> you get into trouble. You could do some damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and so this guitar I got there, it's a player grade 62. It has a very, very thin playable neck. Now, the reason I got it, all my life I wanted a grade 335, and I searched, and I couldn't exactly find one until I got this. And it's, it's got a refret, which is the greatest thing, because the thing I like about new guitars the most is they all have perfect, big, fat frets. So right. this has medium jumbo frets. The pickups are Ron Ellis pickups, which sound great. I love Ron. I love player-grade guitars, because the exact thing that makes the guitar more affordable makes it better for me. The modifications are improvements. So the refret, mostly on this, is what makes it better. <laughs> And I actually love new pickups because all these guys that we know are making the most astounding, like, PAF-style pickups now. Sure. So this thing, I finally got a great 335. It was affordable. Um, it's really playable. I can modify it if I want without feeling guilty or dinging the value. So thank you, Norm, for this thing. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I don't go down there on purpose sometimes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> because if you go down there, you know, you might end up, oh, here's two guitars and some cash. I need that one. You know, it's, it's, it's really funny. Oh, yeah. He's built a business on just that. Yeah. Um, yeah they, I, hearing you come in playing that and just going through the pickups and how every sound is just perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, that's an, that is an excellent start. Okay, so this next guitar is almost brand new. Now, you're going to hear that from me a lot. I really love new guitars. I know it's kind of heresy in some ways, <laughs> but there's a lot of reasons I like new guitars. And part of it is when I was a kid in the 60s, most of the guitars I was looking at were new. And it's just I haven't really lost that enthusiasm for the new guitar on the wall. Sure. Anyway, I searched on Reverb for this for a number of months, and it had two of the three things I wanted. I wanted a particular wide flame, and I wanted a very lightweight guitar. This is seven pounds, 13 ounces. Wow. The one thing I really would have loved if it had been Tobacco Sunburst, because I keep getting Cherry Sunburst Les Pauls. So I have another one now. So this guitar is really amazing. It's a 1960 reissue from 2020. And, but the best thing about it is that I designed the pickups with Rob from Arcane Pickups. And oh, there's going to be yeah. a signature version of these coming out in a few months. And I'll talk about them in a second. 
But I really wanted a light Les Paul. And when I got the guitar, it had the skinny vintage frets. And I had it for two days, and I took it to Norik Renson, and he put medium jumbo frets in it. So I bought the guitar new, knowing I might have to refret it, and I did, because I, I like the taller frets. So I did that, and now it's kind of a dream guitar. So these signature pickups, this one, you know, they're kind of low output. This is Alnico 3, and this is Alnico 2. This is 9.1K, and this is 7.6K. Now, the reason these pickups are so important to me is my favorite pickups over the last 20 years are a pair of Tom Holmes pickups that I just bought randomly. And I know Tom Holmes pickups are pretty expensive and pretty hard to get. Well, it turns out Rob at Arcane knows all about Tom Holmes pickups, and he, indeed, he actually was part of making a licensed Japanese version of these pickups. So he knew exactly what I wanted when I said I wanted to sound like these Tom Holmes pickups. He nailed it. Uh, so the bridge is really sweet and warm, and then the neck is also, the neck reminds me like of a P90 a little bit, but they're very low output, and they're going to come in a much more vintage looking, you know, uh, these are polished, but they're going to sure. be, whatever you want, actually, they'll be uh, uncovered or any style of cover you want, but they're really, really warm. <laughs> And they're also very balanced. We went through some effort in making them exactly the same volume. Oh, and yeah. oddly, they're a different, you know, value, but, but, you know, not knowing anything about pickups, he knew exactly what to do to make them perfectly val balanced volume-wise, so that when you put them in the middle, and you go... So... When we first started on these, the neck was a little bit louder than the bridge, and so he had to do some reworking to make this the exact same volume. Right. Perfect. So anyway, they're sweet and warm and almost sound like the Tele on steroids thing, so I'm really, I'm really proud of these and looking forward to them. What was the to them. process like? Did you actually bring him the example and say, this is what we're chasing? Or? Well, here's the thing, because he knew, it was almost like serendipity. I met Rob through Joe Bonamassa, and we would hang out and talk, and it was like, it was just a late night conversation. He said, hey, what about some signature pickups? And I said, okay, and then I realized my favorite pickups was this one pair of pickups that I would take from guitar to guitar over the last <laughs> 20 years. Right. And he, he knew Tom and worked with him, and so it was, like, it was almost like synchronicity. I met the guy who knew exactly what to do. He didn't have to think about it. He just did it. So The universe provides, yeah, right? <laughs> super happy. So these will be out soon. Yeah, so yeah. This, how will, they, will people find these pickups? Uh, just, just if you want Arcane, just follow Rob at Arcane Pickups. He's kind of a master, and it's not going to take him long. We're going to do you know a couple of hundred probably, or maybe a hundred. I'm not sure what the first run will be, but it'll be soon. And... Uh, just look for arcane pickups. You know, I totally agree about the whole vintage pickup thing because it's it's such a crapshoot. You never know with PAFs, they're no two are alike. It's true. And yeah. I mean, they. In fact, we were with um, Seymour Duncan yesterday, and they were talking about how uh, when they were doing this kind of archaeology of looking through old PAFs, they would find that the magnets varied all the time, wow. and uh, and they were because they kind of used whatever they had. That's true. It's whatever they had around at the time. I mean, yeah. Vox amps were like that. I tried to find the Holy Grail Vox in the 90s, like, right. all the time. I keep buying them, and they were all different because it was just whatever parts they could scare up at the moment. So, right. yeah, it, th these days, I feel like the vintage aesthetic has been brought, brought forward by all our buddies, mm -hmm. and, and really every company makes great pickups now. God, there's, yeah, it is, it's kind of a new golden age. Truly. Yeah. Okay, well, congratulations on the, on the signature pickups. Yeah. They sound Thank amazing. You. Thank you. All right. All right, let's, let's look at more guitars. Okay, so I play Paul Reed Smith guitars most of the time. Sure. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Originally, uh, it was because uh, I would always bend the G-string on the Les Paul out of tune, you know. And I've gotten better at keeping Gibsons in tune, but the PRS solved that problem. And when I met Paul, we became friends, and we just we started talking, and I started doing stuff with him and for him, and I ended up getting some of his guitars. This one I bought. I actually had them make me this guitar, and I paid for it. And the thing I wanted was maybe the most plain P PRS visually that I could get, and of course I wanted it to sound great, and I had to make it lightweight too. So this is basically designed so that the viewer will look at the guitar and not know maybe for the first 30 seconds what it is, and then realize it's a PRS. So I just had the bird here, the dots here, and 
the black with the purfling. Now, I love really gaudy stuff on guitars. Sure. So, uh, I just wanted to slip in this, this kind of border right here, but the pickups are really great sounding. <laughs> I mean, Paul never quit, so he's always upgrading everything, and these pickups are so sweet. I think they're called TCI pickups. I also love a one-piece bridge. I don't know how you feel, but oh, yeah. I always feel like the one-piece bridge is the most tone-worthy thing there is. It has a really thin neck. Um, now, I love really fancy PRSs, and I'm going to pick up one and show it to you. The, 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 the fanciest one I have is actually maybe the best sounding one in some ways, and I'll show it to you in a second. But this one is the guitar I play when I play live because of the look of it. You know, it just disappears, and you, you don't exactly know it's a PRS until you investigate. So I like the kind of the mystery of it. Yeah, Sounds beautiful. amazing, too. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it is so cool the way Paul is always... He's always looking, always trying to improve it. Always, you know? yeah. A friend of mine was in the airport flying to this PRS, and Paul said, hey, let me see that. Didn't even know the guy. And uh, Paul, he shared it to him. He said, oh, man, I should, I should fix this. And he had him send it to him, and he did whatever he did to it just because he can't leave it alone. He's always improving. Yeah, yeah always improving. <laughs> yeah. He even said to me the other day, he said, I realized I've been putting the bridge pickup up too high. <laughs> Like forever, <laughs> and so now he lowered when he when he sends his guitars out. Now the bridge pickup is lower because he thinks it sounds better. So, wow. uh, yeah, it never ends with him. So let me grab one more PR. Oh yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Okay, so I did a bartering thing for Paul, where we did the music school a couple of years in a row, and I said, you know, it's fine. I'll bring I'll bring a bunch of people. We'll sell a bunch of tickets and just make me another guitar. And I I told Bev I said. What are the widest flames you have in the Wood Library right wow. now? So she sent me a couple of photographs. I picked one, and this was the one. Wow. And it's really three-dimensional. I mean, God. you take it outdoors, and it, it's, it's like hills and valleys when you look at this thing. And I think that he probably is annoyed with me making it so gaudy, because once again, I did the purfling, had to have it, right? And, and then these birds. Once oh. I saw these birds, it was like I had to have them. And then I even had them do a little purfling around there. And the, and the curly maple binding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, mean, even that. I mean, it's like these. Yeah. It's like God. everything is, is on the gaudy side, which I love. And this one actually sounds really good. This might be the best sounding PRS I have in addition to be, being the most uh, over the top visually. <laughs> And I even put eights on it just as an experiment. They sound good. There's a sort of a richness to it. Okay, so what, what gauge do you normally run? Okay, 9 through 42. I spent my entire career doing 10 through 46 and 11s also because yeah. in the studio, those were good rhythm gauges, sure. right? But now that I'm kind of my own boss, I'm back to being a teenager and <laughs> it's just getting lighter and lighter. I just want it to be easy and fun yeah, yeah. at this point, you know. Love so easy. Now 9 through 42, but, yeah. but it just depends on the guitar too. And you went eights on this. Yeah, and I'm liking it. I'm going to experiment with eights now too, but... I love this guitar, and I'm a little bit uh, uh, self-conscious about how you know fancy it is, but uh, I picked out the wood, and they built it for me, and I'm really happy with it. <laughs> well, Tim, you deserve fancy. That's, uh, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, right. that's going to be a hard one to beat, yeah. but let's try. So uh, my stepson, who I raised, one of his friends, uh, I traded for this guitar, and it's very meaningful to us. We'll never sell it. I'll just hand it down to somebody else in the family. 62. And these are still pretty affordable, but the great thing is that it has flat wounds. And I've rediscovered flat wounds. Don't ever not have a flat wound strung guitar in, in, you know, in your ar arsenal. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, it just sounds like all the records I grew up loving. So do you ever change the strings? Or? Don't really have to. They don't really um, corrode much, I sure. found. Yeah. Now, this is my favorite tremolo system, actually. <laughs> Pretty cool. Perfect.
Perfect. Yes, yeah, so great. So do you ever get into that madness up there? I do, but it's funny. It all sounds great to me. <laughs> Yeah, ah, that's the, the, the inadvertent, <laughs> the inadvertent turn it off. That it is what. Yeah. <laughs> what <we're doing. laughs> I just love it. The guitar made to be played. I have the reverb on an expression pedal, which we'll talk about too. But anyway, that's great. Yeah, yeah you thank you. Play it while you're on your surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's let's look at more. I love okay, that. Okay, I got one more. So this guitar is new to me. It's a Mario Martin, and a friend of mine bought this guitar. And he sent me a picture of him holding it up with two fingers. So he took two fingers and he, he held it like that. It's four pounds, 13 oh. ounces. It's such a pleasure to have, you know, in my hands. Uh, I play it all the time. You know, part of the reason it's light is because it's a hardtail, okay? But this guitar is really, really magical and it sounds really buttery to me. Um, oh, I put yeah. some distortion on it. But the wood is polonia wood, and Ooh. I researched polonia. I did a video on this. Polonia trees grow in like 12 years to maturity. Wow. So they have farms in Europe and in Asia where they make this wood, and it's super lightweight. Now, it's soft. It's like balsa, so you have to sometimes deal with the screws, you know, it being too soft for the build of the guitar. But no problem here. I mean... I love this wood. It even looks good when it's not finished. It looks a little bit like ash sometimes. So I'm a fan of Polonia. I, re I really am. Uh, it, and you would think this guitar would be neck heavy, but it's very balanced. I mean, the, this side is almost the same weight as this side. So maple neck? Roasted maple, yeah. It's, it's really an awesome guitar. And Isn't like I said, it sounds buttery. It really sounds good. Isn't it interesting how when you pick up a Strat, you just play differently. Oh, so true. It and, just brings stuff yeah. out. Any guitar does turn you into a different guitar player. Yeah. And uh, my, one of my sins as a guitar player is I like guitars to be really easy to play, and then I get more and more smooth and more polished. And there's nothing better than putting me on a guitar that I have to fight because then I sound more more emotional maybe, maybe younger sometimes. I don't know, but you're right about that. And a Strat does make you play different. <laughs> I love this thing. Oh, and the pickups are not, they're not silent. They're very noisy, so I, I hide the noise. It's part of the charm. Part of the charm, yeah. It really is. I mean, that's, yeah. that is like part of that sound. But yeah, Polonia. Okay, fabulous. Okay, one more. Yes, please. So this is near and dear to my heart. David Grissom is a good friend of mine. And uh, I wanted a Grissom and I went on Reverb and I searched and searched. I actually wanted one that was more the aqua blue. This is called Blue Jean, Faded Blue Jean Blue. Mm. But the, the, once again, it's, I go, I love really gaudy guitars. So I found it and I went, yes. And I, I it was, you know, even pre-owned. It was not a cheap guitar. Yeah. Bought it a couple of years ago. Recently, I just did a video about the SE model, which is oh, phenomenal. You did too. It's phenomenal. Incredible guitar, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal. Um, but this guy, I mean, what he, what David, the story of what he put into these guitars, the amount, you know, just years on the pickups, years on designing it and, and making it just the right thickness, even the tremolo system. I mean, everything... It's a player's guitar, and yeah. it really, I mean, if I pick, if I want something that, that is like the most in-tune, reliable, tone-worthy guitar with the 
a beautiful, you know, soft feeling tremolo. Now I get in trouble for that because it's really a vibrato. If you call it tremolo, you'll have comments saying, hey, it's a vibrato. If you call it vibrato, oh, yeah. guitar players will call it a tremolo. It's just well, like. There will be comments. Yeah, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the vibrato, I know it's a vibrato. I mean, just the most beautiful, open sounding. And once you get to know David, and, and you, you, you've got to check out the story, he's literally spent uh, years and years and years designing this guitar, and a, a lot of his ideas have been incorporated in, into the entire PRS line, so I think we all love David, we all love his guitars, and I love uh, just the, the blue and the flame on this one. Oh. Yeah. And it's really its own thing. I mean, you get sounds out of the guitar that are not, yeah. you know, they're not, they're not anything else. No, it, you can really almost, if you close your eyes, you can think, oh, is that a single coil? Uh, yeah, that is like a Swiss army knife of a guitar. You can kind of cover it all. And gosh, aesthetically, it's just... That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And look at the, the gold screws with the silver hardware. I know, that's, really cool. that, that, that didn't just happen. That was a... That was a decision. Everything on there was a yeah. Intention it's David's. Decision. It's it's his work, his life life's work went into this. Yeah. So we we and we all benefit from it. So let me show you this pedal board real quick. Yeah. So this is kind of your gigging pedal board. Yeah. And I I've always built my own pedal boards. You know, just for convenience. Because the minute you have a pedal board made by one of our favorite guys, you're gonna change you want to it? change it exactly. Sure. Yeah. So I do it myself. I use these Voodoo Labs uh, Dingbat pedal boards with the programmable loop strips. I recommend them. But this one, the thing about this one that's unique for me is it has expression pedals. So I can go totally dry and then I can bleed in delay. And is it the Strymon delay that you're... It's uh, the Maris. Okay. Yeah, it's a new Maris. <laughs> I do have multiple delays here, but that's just, you know, so you can do stuff quickly and just call up different sort of presets and stuff. Sure. But I also have this MXR reverb on an expression pedal. <laughs> It's situated so if I want to, I can do both expression pedals at the same time and bleed in delay and reverb. So it's dry. So I'm having fun with that. But you know, I, I redesign these things all the time. I have another one up there that's in process. I, I recommend doing your own pedal boards and trying to buy the best stuff to the best cables and the best. Like I really like the Voodoo Lab stuff. I can vouch for these loop strips. They they have been bulletproof reliable for years now. So what we've got here is we've got the ODR one from the early '90s. We've got the the Equalizer. Uh, modified by XTS. We've got Greg Droman's Karma pedal, which is a clone of the Most Distortion. We have the XTS Tremolo. We have the Vibrato, uh, and I love the Wazocraft Boss Vibrato also. Oh, right. The new one's great. We've got the Universal Re uh, Universal Modulator and the Starlight Echo Machine. This is a Fairfield Electronics Falling Water, which is a great random kind of modulator with a boost in it, which is you know, I recommend. I have the Lex Strymon for Leslie sounds, uh, and then the Andy Timmons Halo for delays, which is an it's amazing so pedal. And then the Maris, which is also a great delay. So that's just right now. These things change all the time. You know, I think, I think you guys, I don't know how you feel, but Pedal boards are always a work in progress. Oh, and, yeah. And this, they're like etched in stone for like a month, and then you change it, you know, and that's how it should be. And yeah. I even create pedal boards for, for particular projects, you know. Oh, sure. So, yeah, this is the, the, the pedal board. I did a video on this pedal board uh, a couple of months ago, and it was very different. So that's changed. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is a moving target. Yeah, so for live, I love to actually just kind of change it up for the particular project. Yeah, isn't it? It's it's a funny thing how I there are pedals that I just like. This is my overdrive. Yeah, and then one day it's like I hate this thing. Anything but this. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, you should embrace that. It, it, you know, keep <laughs> yeah. it fresh. Change it all the time. Keep it fresh. Hey, I would love to hear this weirdo pedal. If that's okay. okay. What, Fairfield. What's, yeah, let's I've do it. Never heard of that before. Yeah. What is it again? Okay, it's Fairfield Electronics Falling Water. <laughs> So what it is, 
is it's, you can really, really twist it. So I wouldn't use it like that, but it's a little bit of warped vinyl, basically, sure. in the sound. And then it has a volume knob, so it has a boost in it, so you can bring back, you know a lot of pedals maybe shrink the tone a little bit? Not yeah. with this, you can actually boost it a little bit. See, when I kick it on, it, it jumps up a little bit, so that's good too, so I recommend it. You just have to really work with it and find the, the warble and the wobble. Uh, and the warped sound that's not unmusical. You know what I'm saying? If oh, you take yeah. it too far, it's not musical. Yeah, so just right before seasick is when it's really the, the sweet You've sound. done this before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I love it. Okay, very cool. Okay, and this is gigging around. Yeah, I, I, yeah I take it to studios, I use it live. And yeah, it's, and also I learned, I mean, in earlier in my career, I had massive pedal boards. Sure. It's just, you gotta be able to carry the thing. So yeah. now I have two of these. If I really want overkill with, you know, all kinds of whammy pedals and stuff, I have another one of these, you know, that, that's up there getting, you know, being born. Sure, So sure. you don't need a big pedal board. It should be big, big enough to get you what you want, but not too big to carry around. Yeah, yeah, because if it's, it, the bigger they are, the more trouble you're gonna have. Either things breaking or hauling around or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, okay, I love this, but I really want to see the command center because that's what I've been watching for years. And I, That's the real rig. Let's go back here. Yeah. Okay, so Tim, we are in the command center. I'm hiding back here. I, I've watched a lot of these videos, and now I know exactly how it's done. <laughs> yeah, okay. This was designed to, for speed and overdubbing because I spent my whole life in recording rooms looking to the side of people, being in the corner. In, it just, it, the feng shui of overdubbing always was a little problematic. So what this is, there's a client desk. It's mirrored Pro Tools stations. I can run it if I'm faster. The engineer can run it if they're faster. If the teenage artist is losing interest, I can do something to raise her level of attention. If, if everybody's looking at their iPhones, I can try and get them out of that mode because I'm looking straight at them. So, and for communication, I can see if somebody's about to make a move. What, it, what it's designed to do is to shave five seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds off of every task so you can get four hours of work done in two hours. And it's worked like a dream. I really, really love it. The monitoring, uh, you know, I have monitors facing me and there are monitor monitors facing the clients. So there's a little bit of a wash from the monitors. That's the only drawback to it. So basically it's an airplane cockpit. So at the heart of it, in, oh, and we're gonna film this, I have my blast area downstairs. I have a vault with six 412s and a Vox cabinet too. So, wow. and these 412s all have different speakers. I went crazy with vintage speakers at a certain point. So there's speakers from 68, 1970, 1971, and 1978, and then brand new ones. And then ones that have been reconed that are original vintage speakers with recones. And that's a thing too, those sound good too. Okay, so how are you just, okay, speaking about your, your cabinets alone, how are you controlling which amp is going to which cabinet? Are they dedicated to one or you can you switch them up? So there's a Kahayan amp switcher right here. And you know, there's a couple of really good amp switchers available. This is Kahayan, they're friends of mine in Spain. And I even visited them in Spain last October. So this particular one is their big one. <laughs> you can do 16 heads and eight cabinets. Wow. I'll never get there, but- Well. I'll who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So all I do is choose the head and choose the cabinet. And then I have mic priests dedicated and microphones dedicated to each cabinet too. So I choose a pair of mics, which is usually a 57 and a Roy or a 57 and another dart, large diaphragm mic. And I just, I choose whatever head. And this is my palette of heads right now. So I've got the divided by 13. The park. A lot cleaner, a lot more headroom. Number three is this Joe Morgan Vox AC-15, which really distorts nicely. And then amp number four is my Bad Cat. Ooh. You just heard the gate on the Bad Cat Lynx. It's a really great high gain sounding head. I don't use that sound that often, but I want it there when I need it. Okay, move to the Bad Cat Hot Cat. Cleaner, more headroom. Right, and then I move to my Marshalls. The top Marshall is a 1968 Super Tremolo that a friend of mine had for 50 years and then sold it to me. 
And the thing about plexis, you guys probably know this, they're pretty clean. So yeah. it's, it's a really great loud clean air. And then Paul Reed Smith uh, gave me this other head that's great. It's a, a Marshall PA head. And I think Eric Johnson had it for a while too. It distorts beautifully. Okay, so I like amps that get to the edge of breakup. And then I like to do the rest with pedals. So if I go over here, this is my palette of pedals. And I have the ODR1. The ODS one, designed by John Shanks and Vermoran. The micro amp, which just kind of hits the front end of the amp like a big fist. Right now I have the broadcast. And then the George Trips Red Llama. I had two of them on at the same time. See, I move fast back here. Sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So now over here, this is kind of new. I used to have a diesel VH4 here, and I sold it. I regret it a little bit because it had Muller tubes and it sounded great. But now I have this shelf that my friend built for me. And so at the bottom, I have what's called the boomerang shelf. <laughs> Okay, so it's got a boomerang, but it's got my three old H9s, which are controlled by this iPad right here. So I can call up really quickly three presets that I've pre-chosen on. I call it my H999, so. <laughs> I have the H90, but I'm, there's a learning curve there, so I'm learning that. So right, these old things, I love them, and I love the, the app. I love everything about them. And then I move to the next shelf, and it's my Ebo shelf. So it's the Ebo reverb that Tom Bukovac told me about. So it's just drool-worthy reverb. Move to the next shelf, and it's in progress. The only thing I have hooked up is the Pete Cornish soft sustain. The G2. The soft sustain sounds really, really good. So this, I'm still building this one. And then the top shelf is, I call it the egg shelf, because it has the neon egg, which is a really fun. That was the octave pedal. I use the octave pedal when I write songs because I'll play a bass part on that. And sometimes it's the bass part that ends up being the bass part. It's pretty <laughs> really? cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Often I replace it, but it sounds so good. It's so great. If you're writing, you put up a drum track, you play the guitar part, you turn on this pedal, play a bass part, you have an instant song. So that's so here's the uh, Neon A. <laughs> has a delay, modulated darkened delay, it has a, um, a compressor, and it has a re So it's, it's a really cool thing. I just, I bought it because it looked cool, and it sounds cool too. Golden Reverb, Super Puss by Way Huge. This is the ultimate memory man of the Fender Tremolo here, the Wazocraft vibrato, and the octave. So a big palette here. These are my gain pedals. Oh, and one gain pedal that is a really great secret weapon is the EVH by MXR. <laughs> Love that pedal, but this this changes a lot too. Uh, and then I have the Echo Park by Line Six for infinite delays. Let me just show you this because it's a great secret weapon. Also, let me see if I can make it work right. I have two volume pedals. One is pre and one is post. One is after the drive pedals to hide that noise, but before all the time based pedals so that they cascade over. And then this other volume pedal is to hide noise if I'm using a particularly loud amp at the end of the chain. <laughs> Okay, let me show you what I do with the line six. Really is a musical, you know, build when it when it does infinite repeats. Yeah, so it's, it's I love that. Is. The stuff it does, the, the stuff pedals do when they're out of control. To me, is the most interesting. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they like 
They make a contribution you could never think of. So anyway, it's a quick overview. Also, I can make hit one button. So I press a button and I'm in the FM9, which gives me a big stereo spread. And I have one of these patched in as a, an additional delay. So if I want that in-your-face direct sound, I love modeling sounds and profiled sounds and I, let me call them artificial sounds. And, and if I add the uh, even tides down here. It's a whole nother world. Oh so, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Press so, the button. Just how loud are these amps? Okay, so they are, I, I used two phrases. They're jet engine loud <laughs> and they're stadium loud. How, Tim, this is the most dialed in <laughs> home rig I've ever seen. Cause you can- Thank you. I bet when you were doing, you know, when you go in to do a session, you could never get it this set. I mean, you well, you'd have to build something. Your cartridge guys would show up with the rig, and you, you know, you you did it and you had it, but it's so much nicer. I, this is like a Ferrari. If you know, it's just basically as simple as turning it on, and you're driving 100 miles an hour. So oh, yeah, it's right. no setup. It's the immediacy of it. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I I find it so uninspiring setting stuff up and checking sounds. Yeah, that's the idea. Any distance between you and your creativity is going to maybe, you're going to lose enthusiasm. You're oh, going to yeah. lose something. So anytime you even have to plug in a cable or, or, or stop and start, you're losing momentum. This is all about momentum, basically. Yeah. The studio. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you have, I don't know, the way my brain works, when I have inspiration, if something else comes in there, that inspiration just goes away. It does, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been fabulous. What Thank you. A, uh, I've been so curious about this for years, and I love being able to see it. Well, see now it. it's, a, it's a film studio. It was an overdub studio, and now it's a film studio, so now I do both. So It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's both. Yeah. Well, Tim, can't thank you enough. This has been amazing. Thank you. Love your show. Look forward to seeing it. <laughs>